Welcome to the Houdini Hulai Challenge series. So, SideFX is holding a challenge where artists create a piece per day based on a daily topic every day for the month of July. I have decided to take on the challenge and also record and edit all of my work so that you get to see the process behind it. I'm doing this because I like a good challenge. So, let's get into it. In this one, we're going over underground. Boom, day 25. So this one is the last entry for worlds. So, yeah, underground, let me show you what I did. So it all starts with a sphere. This is a sphere where I scatter some uh, cubes onto an area. I basically just paint an area, scatter cubes onto it, um, adjust their rotations, clean it up. But there is a fun little trick over here. So if you take a look at this, right, after I've done this whole Boolean thing with all of my spheres and um, these cubes, what you end up with is a little bit of a mess. Because once you convert to VDB, and you do this connectivity thing, you'll see there's these little pieces, right? There's floating pieces, and they could be everywhere. Like, they end up inside, outside, there's a piece over there. Um, you can see over here that it says gather 12 in this for each. So that means that there's 12 loose pieces. Now, that's an issue if you want to do something like UV unwrap measure. So what I do is for each of these pieces, and I'm going to switch to single pass so I can show you. I said for each of these pieces, do some measuring. Measure the area. So when you measure the area, it's measuring the area of a perimeter of a face. So then I say, okay, promote the area to a detail as a sum. So what that's saying is for the whole piece of geometry, add all of the areas of all of the faces and then promote that as a point attribute. What that allows is for me to find out what the biggest piece is because whichever piece has the highest area must be the biggest piece of geometry because it has the most faces contributing, right? So what I can do with that is find max area. Once again, using a promote, you go from area to detail with a promotion method of maximum. So if we take a look at the geometry spreadsheet, Here's all of the areas, right? So 18 all the way down to like north point, north, north four, right? So crazy small values. But then I also find the max area and you'll see that the max area is equal to the biggest area value, right? 18.3259. And so that's pretty cool because then you can say if the area doesn't match the max area, then remove those pieces. So that's what I do over here. I just say, if the area is less than the max area, remove the point. So you can see it removes all those small pieces, right? So that piece over there, gone. It only keeps the biggest piece. And this is a really nice little technique for removing the smallest pieces. And you always keep the biggest piece. So once again, just clean that up and remesh it. Nice little piece of terrain, auto UV. I just finished recording this and I realized that half of the files that I used to record this were corrupted because I ran out of disk space. 
So um, I have to do that all again. So let's go. Now I couldn't really decide what I wanted to show. Um, I think I'll, I'll show grass. So the grass is kind of interesting because this is not simulated, right? You can play this back. This is real time. This is not simulated in any way. It's just sops. This is all sops. Cool thing is you can paint it wherever you want and you can have grass anywhere. So, you know, if you want to use this in your own project, feel free. What I do is I paint areas. So you can see, paint some areas like that, scatter points into those areas, um, basically fuzzy up the, the positions of all of these points and then move them up and duplicate it over, merge those together. So you end up with these that are offset. You can add them together to get blades of grass. Resample it to get curve U, add some noise. But this noise, I store as an attribute called noise, right? I don't actually apply it. What I do is in the next attribute wrangle, I apply it only in certain areas. So you can see here, I say that P should have that noise added to it, but only where this ramp is. So this ramp is based on curve U, once again, from zero to one. So you can see that all of the roots of the grass stay still, but the rest of it looks like it's blowing around. The cool thing about it is that it's only driven by this animate on the noise value. And over here you can see that I have this remap noise. It goes from minus one and one on X and minus one and one on the Z axis, but nothing on the Y axis because grass won't change its height when it's blowing around. It will move to the left and right, um, forward and backwards, but it won't get you know taller or shorter. So you zero out those values, so there's no noise there. And when you render that, you just render as strands. That's if you're using Redshift, you just go over to the strands over here and you say render object as strands. I use a similar thing with the vines. I'll show you the vines, they're also pretty cool. Once again, similar concept where you paint an area with some points, you adjust the position of those points and then you add them together, right? So quick and easy vines. That gets resampled and um, I use curve U to define which areas are the anchors. So which areas should be kind of, you know, not moving. You use a vellum constraints distance along edges and a pin. So you pin them to the base. You can see them pinned over there. So those won't move, but the rest of it's free to move. Then on the actual solver to get this looking a lot better, you just push up your wind drag and velocity damping slightly. What that will allow is for this to kind of lose momentum, but still move very gently. So with the wind inside here, pop wind, you can see that it's reasonably low amplitude and a reasonably low swirl size. That just gives it a bit of a subtle move. And so let me show you how that looks. So an issue that I was having was that these vines, when they're hanging like this, they were intersecting the ground too much because as you could imagine, you'd want this as a polywire or a strand. And when you do that, it would intersect the ground. And you can see that they're standing away from the ground. To do that, I increased the thickness on this vellum constraints. So on the vellum constraints distance along edges, you just increase the thickness. So you can say set uniform and increase thickness. That just gives it a bit of padding. Once again, doing a bunch of stuff with um, noises and curve view and all of that. And then all of the other elements, all small things. Um, I can't go into all of it in a lot of detail, but you can check them all out in the file, um, which will be attached, of course. But then the final render looks like this. And if we go into the copnet, I can show you that quickly. This is the render as it comes out. The first thing that I wanted to do was kind of make it a bit more punchy, increase the contrast and make the shadows blue. So I do that in one post effects. So you can see saturation increased, um, contrast increased, there's more blue in the shadows. And then um, I added a glow to the things like the fire, the mushrooms, fireflies, and then just a grain and a scale. The scale, the only reason it's there is so that on the Houdini Hulai forum, you're not getting a 4K image that um, takes forever to load. So I just scale it down from 4K to HD, 1080p. So yeah, that's what you end up with. Like personally, I was quite happy with this. Like I don't think this one's deserving of a win, but I do quite like it. Kind of magical, you know, uh, it's, it's got a bit of charm to it. So yeah, that's all for this part. I will be back tomorrow with day 26. 
Day 26 is part of the last week. That week went really well, so there should be some cool things in that week that I can show you. Anyways, thank you for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.